We're inside InterNACHI's free online how to perform deck inspections course and we're at the supports and connections section and we're going to talk about ledger connections. Most common cause of deck collapse is when the ledger pulls away from the band joists of homes and buildings. The two most common ways to correctly attach a ledger to a structure are with lag screws and through bolts. The installation of through bolts requires access to the backside of the rim joist, which in some cases is not possible without significant removal of drywall within the structure. Most building codes state that where positive connections are to the primary building structure cannot be verified during an inspection, decks should be self-supporting, which is like freestanding. So it's really important to see that strong attachment from the deck to the structure. Determining the exact required spacing for ledger fasteners is based upon many, fa uh, many factors, including the joist length, type of fastener, diameter of the fastener, the sheathing thickness, use of stacked washers, type of wood species, moisture content, band joist integrity, deck loads, and so it's all of this is well beyond the scope of a home inspection. And so is code. Home inspectors are not code inspectors, but home inspectors may be interested in learning what the code says and what the standards are. So let's take a look at the code. Fasteners used in deck ledger connections should be installed in accordance with a building standard that describes the deck ledger connection to the band joist. And this is in 2021 IRC table R507.9.1.3.1. So here's the table. So let's take a look at this table. What we have is load on the left. Let's just go with the 40 PSF live load. And the joist spans, some common joist spans and feet. And here's the half inch diameter lag screw as the fastener with half inch maximum sheathing. There's the half inch diameter bolt with half inch maximum sheathing. And there's the, the bolt with one inch maximum sheathing. So we're gonna take a look at the online spacer spacing of fasteners, okay? So for example, let's assume the deck is built with a 40 PSF live load design. The joists are spanning 10 feet and one half inch diameter lag screws are used. The on center spacing of fasteners is 18 inches. Just go straight across. And remember the tip of the lag screw should fully extend through and beyond the inside surface of the band joist. So if I'm in a basement or crawl space under the floor structure, and I'm going to the band rim joist of the structure, I can pull away some insulation if it's there, put it back, and take a look for any type of fastener that was used on the deck. And if it's a lag screw, those tips should be visible. The on-center spacing of ledger fasteners re that's required is primarily determined by the span of the joists. Now, InterNACHI has a ledger fastening spacing formula which provides home inspectors a general rule of thumb because we're not supposed to be using these code tables, right? But if you wanted to eye it up, this general rule of thumb may work for you. On center spacing for one half inch lag screws in inches is 190 divided by the joist span in feet. If you have half inch bolts, it's 330 divided by joist span in feet. But this is a very general rule of thumb it may differ considerably from the modern local building standards or codes or best practices and, and other uh, residential codes. And it may not even work because it's a general rule of thumb. But if you're trying to figure out, are there enough fasteners in the ledger board of the deck that I'm inspecting, you may want to refer to something. For example, using 2021 IRC table R507.9.1.3.1, if the deck is built with a 40 PSI PSF live load and the joist span is 12 feet, okay, joist span is 12 feet and the fasteners are one half inch diameter bolt, one half inch diameter bolt, not the lag screw, the bolt, with one half inch maximum sheathing, the on center spacing is what? 29 inches, 864 millimeters. 
If the fasteners are half inch lag screws with one half inch maximum sheathing, the on center spacing is 15 inches. So there's the lag screws because lag screws pull out. So you need more of them. The on center spacing is tighter. You need more of them, only 15 inches apart with lag screws. Bolts, stronger. You can space them out a little bit more on the ledger board. That's good to know. Now, where are they placed on the ledger board? Well, lag screws or bolts must be installed through the ledger board in a staggered pattern, staggered from the top and bottom along the horizontal run of the deck ledger. So they're staggered like this, boom, 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 uh, 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 right, in two rows. The fasteners at the deck ledger board should be staggered in two rows, spaced one and a half, uh, one and five eighths inches apart from each other to five inches apart from each other, no more than five inches. The maximum distance from the bottom row of these lag screws or bolts at the deck ledger board to the top of the ledger is at least five and a half inches. So the bottom row has got to be, can't be like two rows right next to each other. Got to bring that second row down. For two by eights, five and a half inches, two by ten, six and a half, two by twelve, seven and a half. The placement of the lag screws or bolts at the deck ledger board should be two inches from the top edge, two inches from the top edge, three quarter inches from the bottom edge, three quarter inches from the bottom edge, like this, and two to five inches from the ends. So a minimum of two inches from the end. You don't want a connection right at the very edge, but you don't want it to be too far away either. Two to five inches. Through bolts should be a minimum of one half inch in diameter and have washers at the bolt head and nut. Lag screws should also be a minimum of one half inch in diameter and have washers. Expansion and adhesive anchors should also have washers. Deck ledger boards should be made of at least two by eight pressure treated wood as a general rule. Band joists supporting a ledger must be a minimum two inch nominal, 51 millimeters, solid sawn, spruce, pine, fir, or better lumber, or a minimum of one inch nominal engineered rim boards. And this is in the 2021 IRC R502.1.7. The tip of the lag screw, again, should be fully extended beyond the inside face of the band joist. And there are three ways to attach a joist to a ledger. The first is by resting the joist on a ledger strip. And this, sh this illustration shows a joist resting on a two by two ledger strip. And that's in the code. The second is by notching over a ledger strip. And there's regulations, provisions about the notches, remember. Third is by hanging them by floor joists. That illustration shows a floor joist. And this one shows a defect where the joist is cut too short or is simply pulling away from this two by two ledger. And this illustration shows a joist that is not fully rested in the joist hanger. That's a defect. This image here shows a ledger board and band joist sandwiching the structural sheathing right there. There's the rim joist of the house, stud walls, and there's a ledger board of the deck. You can have open space here in between. The IRC table R507.9.1.31 for ledger connections allows up to one inch of open space between the house band and the ledger. There's, there can be an open space right here. This provides for wall sheathing and or drainage and ventilation. It's not intended for cladding. Code specifies a clearance below all of these products or references the manufacturer's installation recommendations. However, none of the clearances references decks specifically. So throughout the IRC and manufacturer's recommendations, minimum clearances are required between the exterior wall covering, the cladding, and the ground, the exposed earth, paved surfaces, and finished ground level or grade, but doesn't say much about decks. So the clearance between the the exterior siding and the deck surface. Not much there. All through bolts should have washers and the bolt head and nut. Now this illustration shows a hold down tension device. Code requires lateral connections or hold down tension devices at no fewer than two decks, two locations per deck. Codes in some areas 
forbid attaching a ledger board to an open web floor truss, so careful. This illustration shows a ledger board attached to a concrete wall. This ledger board is attached to hollow masonry. This ledger board is improperly supported by brick veneer. Ledger boards should not be supported by manufactured stone or brick veneer. Ledgers are not permitted to be supported on stone or masonry veneer. Ledger boards should not be attached directly, surface mounted, to stucco or eaves. Stucco and eaves have to be cut back so that the ledger boards can be attached directly to the band joists of the structure of the house. However, cut back stucco and eaves are difficult to flash and weatherproof. Once you open them up, it's difficult to prevent water intrusion. Ledger board flashing is intended to divert moisture away from the wooden structural components of the house. The deck ledger connection is only as strong as the wood it's attached to, and rotted wood is not very strong at all. Ledger flashing is only required for decks attached to wood frame construction. Since the ledger board is required to be decay resistant, the flashing is primarily to protect the house. So ledger boards attached to the concrete foundations don't require this type of flashing, but a durable sealant is recommended. And there's an illustration, a good illustration of that flashing right there. And so you want to take a look at the flashing underneath the ledger board and above the ledger board. And some clearance ideally, and some flashing there. And here's a video of an inspector explaining what he observes during an inspection at the deck ledger board. 